1,550. That's how many students attend the Howard School. That number is striking concerns in parents, teachers, and students who say the school is overcrowded. We can't walk in the hallway without bumping into somebody because we have to walk like in a certain direction. It was a sea of maroon and gold. Teachers, parents, and students gathered to voice their concerns about the Howard School. Last four years, um, our enrollment has soared from approximately 900 to almost 1,600 students. Howard has the largest enrollment in the district. As a result, Sharp says teachers are sharing classrooms, school bus drivers are having trouble with overcrowded buses, and even long lunch lines are an issue. So by the time the line get down, lunch be over. So a lot of kids don't even get to eat. It's an issue high on the school board's radar. Enrollment at Howard drastically changed over the last five or six years, um, and it needs to be addressed. It's not going to be an easy fix at all. The school has introduced portable classrooms, but some parents say this is not enough and they need more permanent solutions. I want to make sure that all of District 11 and all of Hamilton County is well represented when we're making these decisions. For Jill Black and her district, Howard's student population is an issue not to be ignored. It's been put on the back burner for so long and due to the fact that there's a lot of students being put over there at Howard, then all of a sudden it's a problem. Don't forget about us. Tennessee taxpayers investment in education is growing rapidly. According to a 2021 Beacon Center study, Tennessee education funding was more than $10.8 billion, with only $5.8 billion making it into the classroom. This includes teacher salaries and other learning and material costs. Ideally for teachers, additional funding would go to the classrooms and towards their salaries. I've never met a teacher that said that they went into it for the money. Um, that doesn't mean that we should take advantage of the heart that they have for teaching by not paying them well enough. So where does the additional funding go to? According to the Beacon Center, administrative costs. According to the study, about 9.25% of all educational funding, that's $1 billion, goes to administrative overhead. This figure shows inflation-adjusted salaries between 2012 and 2020. Here you can see an actual decline in teacher pay, but a hike in administrative salaries. In Hamilton County, Superintendent Dr. Justin Robertson agrees that teacher pay isn't enough, but he also says... We don't pay our administrators enough either. Talking about people sitting beside me, I'm talking about the school principals, school assistant principals. In an interview, he expanded upon his thoughts on admin pay. When you look at Hamilton County salaries across um, other large districts in Tennessee, uh, we are actually trailing be behind most of those large districts. Robertson tells us that in Hamilton County, teacher and administrative pay move on a scale. So when teacher pay increases, so does assistant principal and principal pay. While the number of teaching positions has been flat in the last 10 years, according to the Beacon Center study, the number of assistant principal positions has grown by 25%. Chattanooga's The Howard School now has one executive principal and five assistant principals on staff at a cost of more than $600,000 per year. The district says that's because Howard has the highest enrollment in the district. We found that they also have the worst attendance. According to the Department of Education statistics, more than half of the students at Howard are chronically absent. If taxpayer money for schools isn't enough, there are millions in nonprofit dollars. According to 2019 tax forms, Chattanooga's Public Education Foundation had a $14 million budget for collaborative learning projects. It's a great partnership. It's been ongoing for uh, more than 30 years. Dan Challoner is the president of Public Education Fund. His salary of more than $200,000 annually rivals that of a school superintendent. We are able to provide some resources that every school district, Hamilton County and every school district, wants to do as much as is humanly possible for its students and its teachers. With so many millions of dollars pouring into Chattanooga education, teachers are only getting a fraction of it. When you have such a huge gap, uh, that can be demoralizing to the teachers that are in the classrooms every day uh, trying to help the students. In Chattanooga, Leslie Dominique reporting.
Now we also looked into how PEF spends their money. This tax form shows they brought in $5.2 million in 2019, mostly in grants and contributions. They paid out 53% of that money in salaries, with more than $595,000 going to those in top jobs. Tennessee's K-12 public schools are now moving to a student-based funding approach under a new law signed by Governor Bill Lee. It includes direct funding for fast-growing districts, tutoring for fourth grade, as well as career and technical education. A new noise ordinance was brought up at the Chattanooga City Council, but it's a little different than the one that is already active. That's a decibel reader, which measures noise levels, and now the city wants to address this kind of reading, which causes a quality of life issue for suburban neighborhoods. People want to go to sleep. They want to do whatever. They don't want motorcycles, firecrackers, whatever it is that's annoying them. The current noise ordinance affects only downtown, but council member Chip Henderson says this new one will be a bit different. Specifically, I think more for residential, what we might call residential areas. Councilwoman Carol Burrs says the people she represents needed some recourse. The kinds of things that, that were being complained about weren't just musical instruments. They were people yelling at one another. This draft ordinance shows it will be complaint driven, meaning someone will have to call the person in. Every one of these are complaint driven, which means this doesn't come into effect unless someone complains. But when we spoke to suburban residents, they said, If it's not confidential, then it's not gonna work. And it has to definitely be enforced. 